All right, so as you all know, I really hate recording with this thing. It is the Oppo Find X2 Pro. I've had it for years now. As the phone goes, it's so-so. Uh, I was hoping its camera would be better, but the issue is if we use the built-in camera to do 4K at 60 FPS, you get all that rolling shutter, as you've seen all the time. If we use open camera like I'm using now, it's 4K at only 30 FPS, but we don't get the rolling shutter, and no matter what, because we live in Australia where there's apparently a, more of a climate issue, I don't know, there's a big-ass hole in the sky, and it gets bloody hot. So we had 35 degrees yesterday, we're gonna have 35 degrees today, which means this phone overheats at the drop of a hat. It's 7 a.m. or something at the moment, which means it's tolerable temperature, but by midday, this phone will record a few minutes, then crash. So. Black Friday special, I got the DJI Action 2 dual screen combo. This was a 799 camera down to 269, I think, something like that. I saved around 500 bucks. Could not say no. Uh, there's a few different combinations of this you can get. So you can get the standalone camera, you can get the dual screen camera option. That also then supports a SD card, adds extra battery life, that sort of thing. You can get the combination where it's for mountain biking or FMX and whatnot that has all the helmet straps and everything. And you can get just a power pack. So this camera is a more expensive add-on. The power one has the same battery as this, which I think is another 900 milliamp hour, uh, but it is just, just the battery, no camera or anything like that. So by default, this thing can record on its own. I can't remember the exact recording specifications, but it's got built-in memory. I bought an SD card for it and you'll need a U3 card, I believe. So it needs to do 30 megabytes per second because this will write at 130 megabit at full tilt. Um, <clears throat> I've lost that somewhere, so we'll just be using the built-in recording for testing. Now it does uh, 1080p at 240fps for slow-mo, but it'll also do, I believe, 4K at either 60 or 4K at 120, which is awesome. Uh, you can see that there, it also has the super wide field of view, touch screen, stabilization back built in, uh, 10 meters waterproof on its own, 60 meters with the case and the uh, built in run the runtime, I believe, is about 70 minutes of 1080 recording, or it might even be 40 minutes, but then it's extended to 70 or 90 by this. So I'll put all the specs below on the links below. It's been a few weeks since I've read about it, but basically, 4K at 120 FPS is bloody awesome. It's got ultra wide mode, it's got the add on touch screen reversible camera, it's got the clips, everything like that. So let's get into it and see what it looks like. So there are these little three and a half by three and a half centimeter cubes. And like everything DJI, they seem to be pretty well made. I'm not gonna get into how much of my stuff they might be, you know, all my data they're harvesting or using for Chinese espionage. Who knows if the US is right or wrong with that. It's a big ass lens. Uh, it's meant to be fairly drop resistant too, I believe. I'm not gonna drop it. It is, it is fairly hefty, uh, but it looks well made. So you've got the add-on connector, lanyard connector. It's got the microphone slots. Now there is a lot of criticism about the USB-C connection that's on this. Um, where is that? Okay, so you must have to charge it through that port because I don't see a USB-C port, unless I'm just a special. Uh, and then we've got this extra camera add-on. So the criticism is that there's not much USB-C, so there's the USB-C port on this, on-the-go features exposed. Now, I have seen one guy say that um, he used a USB-C to audio adapter and he managed to do the audio recording through that, which would be great for these sorts of situations where I'm making videos. However, I can always record uh, my audio separately and add it in afterwards. That's not a problem. What everyone really wants though is the ability to monitor. So I'm gonna have to test this with HDMI out. I've got two here that I'll try. But you can see it pretty much just snaps on with these two little things, USB, SD card slot, uh, power button, this and touch screen. This will remove the waterproofing, of course. I'm not sure if this has its own water resistance, but it doesn't look like it. Oh, that's got a good magnet grip. It's got a little display there. It's like, nah, bud, plug your plug your camera back in, put it in, and it all looks pretty happy. It only goes on that one way. So I turn it on from that one, it turns on. That is in the wrong language, buddy. Can you, battery's at 1% charge. Yep, fair enough. I really need a different language. So I'm gonna go explore this, see if I can change the language, and I'll be back shortly. All right, before this battery goes flat, apparently you swipe down, go settings, scroll all the way down, and this near the bottom, there we go, language, English. Oh yes, hey, so much better. And it seems to have some sort of protection mechanism. It was locking one of the screens before. 
I'm not sure under what circumstance it does that. So I'm going to get a little bit of charge into this. I'm all right. Swipe to unlock screen. Oh, okay, I see. So yeah, a few different settings there. Power reserve 2.7. 4K 16 by 9 is what I want. And one of this petty stuff, I want full frame rate. So at what point do I get it to, what's RS? Turn that off. Ah, I see. So I wonder if without Rocksteady, no. I'm gonna to have to investigate how to get to the 120 FPS range and see what this thing can really do. Okay. So you can lock and unlock individual screens, it seems like. I'm gonna charge it, test the monitor option through USB-C to let you know. I've only got one of my adapters here, but I do have more elsewhere I might be able to grab and see how this goes back shortly. All right, so you absolutely have to firmware update this. If you don't firmware update it, you don't get the 120 FPS 4K options and you don't get the 240 FPS 1080p options. What you can also see here though, is you only get four to six minutes worth of video uh, due to temperature it looks like, because it's saying at certain temperatures you get different amounts of video. So I'm gonna keep it at 4K 60 FPS and you've got a few stabilization options here. Um, rock steady, horizontal. It seems to actually be pretty cool. I was having a tinker with it before, but I'm gonna leave it on steady. The only other thing uh, good to be aware of with the firmware update is you will want to go into here and pick your video compression option. So I have specified compatibility. I prefer H.264 over H.265 for my workflow at the moment, just the software I'm using. And I've manually set my anti-flicker to 50 hertz, which is uh, Australia. Uh, auto does seem to work, but I'm not a fan of it. There's a whole other little thing, pile of things you can do in here, but just definitely firmware update it using the Mimo app, which I'll put a link below because it's not in the Play Store. The only other things are uh, you can swipe right to get to the footage you've recorded. You can swipe down to get to your settings, swipe up to change your mode, swipe right for these pro settings, which you can turn on to get these extra options uh, by going down and then across one. There's your pro mode. There is also lock rotation, brightness controls, voice control. I'm not gonna tinker with those because I don't like any of those things. You can tap the battery to see whether or not, or what charge percentage it is. And it has little arrows going in and out, as you might have seen before, that indicates whether it's taking charge from or giving charge to this battery, pardon me, uh, screen unit. And lastly, for zoom, you can push and hold that bottom right and zoom in and out. So now I'm going to stick this in the camera. For, uh, I'm going to stick this camera in the freezer for a minute and have a look at what's in the rest of the box. Now we've got a USB Type A to C cable, pretty stock standard. Okay, so we have a lanyard here, which is magnetic. So it sticks to that and then that sticks to the bottom of it to cover the pins. That's pretty neat. It seems to be pretty good too. What I want though is a tripod mount for it. Is that what this is? Almost, that's part of a tripod mount, so that's for any mount really. Um, over on this side we have, that's what I'm after, excellent. So that is your tripod mount and there's gonna be another piece of that one I'm guessing, let's see. Really, this one has to be the toughest to open out of all of them. Oh. I'm, is that magnetic? Uh, all right, I'm really confused about what that is, but maybe that goes through something to mount into this, or it's just for a desktop stand, because it's connected to a computer, can actually run in webcam mode. Um, so it'd be a pretty high quality webcam. But it's interesting, it's just got this as a common adapter, I guess, for any helmet mounts or chest mounts you may have. So I've got a couple of those lying around from some cheapies. Otherwise, if you've got a other DJI uh, kits or if you've got GoPro kit, that'll most likely mount to that. And that is nice die cast aluminium. So what I'm gonna do now is using this, I'm gonna swap it with the phone. And what we're also gonna try is 
using the audio input. I'm not sure if it'll work, but I'll plug in this USB-C adapter for my Rode Wireless Go and either I'll record it on the Rode and copy it across later, or it'll record in this. I'm not too sure, so I'll add a little thing across the top. Back in a tick. So this is the third time I'm recording this and uh, recording it for a different reason this time. First time I recorded it, I was um, new to the camera, messing around with it, recorded this bit, took the camera to work, ran out of storage when I was testing the thermal properties and then just formatted it, not thinking about it. Second time I re-recorded it and basically said everything I said the first time, including calling myself an idiot. But then I've used it more and uh, I'm not gonna use that cut. I'm gonna use it a third time. And the reason is because I've changed my mind. I'm gonna sell this camera after this recording and I'll tell you why. So first of all, it's currently in 4K 60 FPS mode with uh, steady turned on and no zoom. So that's its natural field of view there. And as you can see as well, the amount of light it's picking up is not awesome. I'll change it to plus two EV now. Turns out that was already at plus one EV. So this is at zero EV, now turn it up to two. All right, so at plus two EV, we actually have an acceptable brightness that's got a lot of detail in it. However, there's just too much noise here. So that is not working for me. I'm not shooting on these cameras. They're an action cam, they're not meant for indoor. And by the way, I have three lights on over me. It's light outdoors. Uh, it's fairly bright in here. As you can see with some side by side, I'll actually put in some footage here of the camera compared to my normal Oppo camera and you'll see a hell of a difference there. It does great outdoors. I'm gonna to try to cut in some outdoors footage here as well, just maybe walking around out the front or showing some grass. I'm not too sure what, I don't wanna give my location away, of course, and dox myself, but it actually does really well outside in full natural light. I'm not sure how to go with cloud, cloud cover, but for action cameras, a little bit of um, graininess, some high ISO is perfectly fine. Now, this is also using the Rode microphone at the moment. So you can see if I, um, Clip that here, that's just plugged into it with USB-C, and you would have seen on that last video clip as well, there is a little microphone icon just up here uh, that indicates that it's using the external microphone. There is still, there we go, there is still no way to have any HDMI out, so that also really bothers me. Uh, to compare the built-in mic to the normal mic, they're both quite good, of course. Uh, sorry, compare the external mic to the built-in mic, they're both quite good, so, this is with the Rode Wireless Go 2, which I reviewed just before and I've been using for everything now, very much like it. And then if I unplug that, this is with the built-in mic. And it is actually quite a good built-in mic. I believe it's got four microphones across the two modules. So two at the top, two at the bottom, and they're side to side, front and back. So you get really good directional audio, which can be used in a number of ways when you're editing. However, it doesn't feel as full and rich to me. So if I stop smashing it, I'm going back to the good old Rode. Let's actually clip that in there now it's less likely to break. Um, so the audio is quite good. Now you need to do your firmware update and you've got to use the Android app uh, from their website to do it because it's not in the Play Store or F-Droid Store anymore. So I will put the link to that below. It's a slow 300 meg download, um, but you unlock all the features. For iOS though, the DJI Mimo app is still in the iOS store. So you're perfectly fine there. Once your firmware updated, it, you wanna go into it and change the high temperature setting. Now this isn't available in all countries apparently, but in Australia you can change it from normal thermal cutoff to high thermal cutoff. I warn you, it goes from like 42 degrees or 40 something degrees to 50 something degrees. It gets hot, it actually gets too hot to touch uh, in some situations. However, it records instead of for about six minutes for like 20 minutes before it runs out. I've also turned my brightness all the way down to try to reduce the amount of uh, heat that this thing's putting out. And it's important to be aware that if you have both modules on, it helps the thermal management of it as well. With a single module, it doesn't quite last as long as two modules because that's dissipating the heat. And I think the fact that it's being powered, I believe, from the bottom module helps with the whole thing. Um, I'm not sure how that works really. It seems like it might use the bottom module's power when it's recording and then when it's not recording, recharge itself. Uh, it's, it's actually quite smart. I'll give them credit for that. You can also get, or you do get, a magnetic case for it that covers it. So when you order one of these, it should ship with it since March this year, 2022. What a fun year. Uh, if it doesn't, contact your seller or just wait a few days because sometimes uh, if you bought stock from before then, within a few days, if you go to the DJI store and click on my coupons, I'll put a link below as well, a coupon just appears. Even then if you can't be you know, asked dealing with the seller or as an eBay and didn't come with one, they're 29 bucks on the accessories store. So really cheap. And they clip on and the camera senses it and it also adjusts its thermal properties as well. Besides being like impact resistant, protect the lens a bit, it does 
further enhance its thermal management. So, uh, there's a whole pile of other accessories on the store as well. The two key ones being there is a selfie stick, which has like an extension and a grip. I'll put a screenshot in here. And there is also a macro lens, so you can put it on it. Like it's, it's macro is not great, obviously, but the macro lens definitely helps with that. So if you want to do some close up nature photography, bees, wildlife, whatever, macro lens is cheap and awesome. All the different uh, straps as well. So you can get chin mount, helmet mount, chest mount, um, tripod, all that sort of stuff's on there. And it's all really well priced. Now, it's good to be aware as well, as I was talking about battery before, this does actually hammer the battery. Uh, 4K at 120 FPS really hammers it. Uh, 4K at 60 FPS seems all right. You, I've um, been getting 20, 30 minutes out of it, depending on the use case. It does, as I said, get really hot. That probably affects the battery life as well. So use an external battery pack if you can. That's likely, untested, but likely to improve things slightly for you. I just don't have the time and patience to test every combination and how long it records for. Now that app in the app store that you can get, the DJI Mimo app also has this AI editor built in. I'm not sure if they're trying to copy what some other vendors are doing or not, but it seems pretty smart. It seems to pick the action moments from all your, um, you know, multiple images you've taken or multiple videos and stitch them into one. So that's actually pretty neat if you're out and about, you're on the bikes or the quads or something and you wanna just cut together a quick shot. Uh, you've been recording all day. If you've got enough storage, you hit that and you're off to the races. It'll just stitch up however long you want and you've got something you can send to someone. With the app on the phone as well, you can transfer it straight across either, over wireless, uh, either wirelessly or with the USB-C cable. And it has two different resolutions. When it's recording, it records one at 720, which is still an MP4 file, but it's got a different extension on the end. You can just play it in VLC. And then it's got your, your full resolution. Uh, so the phone is only usually using the 720p resolution, I believe. And it's good to be aware of that because on the phone, you won't necessarily notice that you're using the lower quality version, but there are a whole pile of different export options there and whatnot. As far as stabilization modes go, I'm using steady because it reduces the field of view. This is the narrowest field of view you can get. There's also rock steady uh, and uh, horizon steady. And horizon steady is the one that they're pushing the most because it will find the horizon and it will lock onto that. And I've tested it a fair bit. I can wobble the camera around like this and the image doesn't move. It's actually locked onto that horizon. So they're touting this quite a bit for an obvious reason. Now, if you're on a jet ski or a skateboard or something like that, that would be great. I don't think it's gonna be good for uh, BMX or motocross though, because if you're hitting a berm and you tilt to take the berm, you want that on the image. You want the image to follow you know, your angle. So be aware of that. You can turn all of them off and then it's quite wide as well. So this has about 150 degree field of view, which can get a bit narrower, a bit wider, and it does have an ultra wide option as well. Um, for me, I want something closer to the like the 75 to 100 range. Uh, 85 seems perfect, and this just doesn't do it. So the two downsides for me is the indoor light uh, light quality, or the um, you know how sensitive it is to light. It obviously needs a lot of light. It would need production lamps in here to light it up. Not ideal for me. The other thing is that lack of field of view. So I want a tighter field of view for most of what I'm doing. It's just not designed for it. It was a really good buy for its price. I wouldn't pay $7.99 for it. Luckily, they're down to like $439 still at the moment for you know Christmas, Boxing Day, whatever you want to call it. Um, what I paid for it, definitely worth it. However, I'm not outdoors enough anymore, so I'm going to be selling this one. It's only for those two reasons. Otherwise, I think it's great. The thermal management so-so, but stick an SD card in it. Like you get a 256 gig um, V3 SD card. It does 30 megabytes a second, I think, because this thing will write 130 megabits, and you're off to the races. But for me, it doesn't work. So I definitely do rate this one quite highly. Three downsides, really. No USB HDMI out for monitoring. Uh, you can probably do it with the app, but that doesn't quite work for my use case. Field of view is pretty poor, and your uh, indoor light sensitivity is really bad. Actually, and the thermal management. Yeah, so there are four issues with this. Your indoor light sensitivity is really bad. They're pretty much only meant for outdoors. You don't have the field of view that I want. They're pretty much only wide angle. They don't really have like this linear, tighter cropped image. There's no HDMI out on USB-C and the thermal management should be improved. I'm not sure, you know, if the next version or something like that will improve it or how they can improve it because, you know, recording it 4K, 60 FPS, H.265 is a heavy operation. So they did well, doesn't work for me. Would still recommend it for anyone outdoors. So enjoy, see what you think. Definitely smash the like button below. God, I wanna neck myself for saying that. Hit the like button if you liked it. Hit the dislike button twice if you didn't like it. Leave me a comment if you wanna know more about any specific test case, because I've recorded some hours worth of footage now in all sorts of different situations. 
Um, and otherwise, subscribe. I've also got the gaming channel, uh, which is a crapshoot, and I've got the cooking channel, which is my main one, which is all appliances and whatnot. Well aware that this sort of thing with the camera and even the road microphone before is slightly off topic for this channel. It's not my normal sort of IoT electrical content, but it's still relevant and I think it's important. So I'll probably do one more of these, but I have been working on a bigger project and there's gonna be a giveaway in the bigger project. I'm hoping either I'll finish it this week or I've stuffed something up and I'm gonna to have to order more parts and I'll finish it in another week or two. So let me know what you think. Take it easy guys. I hope you're enjoying the holiday season. Stay safe and happy new years. Well, depending on when you watch this. See ya.